In Battletech, one of the most common terrain features is simple elevated terrain, such as hills. And today we are going to go through the process I have in creating these kinds of tiles out of XPS insulation foam. Hello everyone, I'm Daniel with Hex Crafting and I'm glad to have you with me today. Let's go ahead and jump into how we take these simple tiles and turn them into hills. Let's go and take a look at one of my hill tiles here and just to give you an idea of what we're working with here. Um, this is essentially another tile set on top of the first one with some of the edges cut away. Uh, uh, in this case, I use the Proxon to slice away in a sort of, well, non-steady pattern around the edges to give it sort of a uh, jaggedy look. It's not realistic by any shape of the mean, but it does look interesting and it does get the point of this being a hill across. All right, that being said, go ahead and grab one of the tiles here. Uh, we are simply going to do this freehand. Uh, in fact, if you've got your, your fence set up, this is probably easier to do without the fence in place here. But we're going to fairly jaggedy go around the edges several millimeters in. Uh, uh, so we're going to turn on the hot wire cutter and we are just going to cut in like this. Uh, it's not important that we have a, uh, a consistent cut uh, because the sort of bumps and ridges are, are what kind of help make this look kind of like a uh, geological bit of terrain. Now in this case, uh, we are cutting a full uh, hex, just like that. Uh, and we'll just pull off the edges and dispose of that. And we have a one hex tile hill, just like that. Uh, with this, we'll just go ahead and glue it down uh, on top of our terrain like so. And in this case, we would have a... Uh, a four piece tile with one hill and uh, three uh, lower elevations. All right. Now let's say you want to make yourselves a two wide hill. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and mark these. This is one way to do it. This is not uh, the only way. In fact, I've sort of moved on from this method, but I wanna show this to you here. Uh, in the case you're gonna have two hills that are abutting, we're generally gonna have one side of it, which is not modified that are gonna be flush with one another. Uh, and what I do in this case uh, is uh, I mark the side that I want to be unmodified and uh, we go through and we cut the other side. So with a two piece here, uh, we're gonna have uh, at this point uh, five sides that are hill shaped and then you've got one side that is not. In this case, we cut them right to the corners, just like so, so that when we butt two of them up next to one another, they're equidistant. Now, you do run across a problem. I'll show you here in a moment. Let's go ahead and get this other one cut real quick. But just like the first one, we go in in a corner. Uh, in a few millimeters, we sort of jaggedy, go down one one level and then the same we bring it back over and eventually I do end up pulling off my fence when I when I do this on my own here but for now even with the fence you can see it's certainly doable so let's go ahead and pull that off now take a look at this so we have the two sides you can see what I mean about how it's butting up to one another um, there is an issue where there is a bit of overlap you can see there where they're not ex the the hex sides are not exactly the same that's not actually too noticeable it's not too big of a deal because when you paint it up it'll just look like another another bit that wasn't done but there is another way to do this and I'll I'll show that off here in a minute all right let's say that you want to go through and have a triangle three pieces well this means we're gonna have two adjacent hex sides they're gonna be untouched so in this case we're gonna be following the same process I'm simply gonna have two of these hex sides that are not being touched by anything so we go in in a corner we sweep down to the next corner we sweep over uh, we rotate a little bit 
and then we continue where we will exit out leaving two corners that are untouched now if we set these down here you can see how they will connect like this giving us the outside edges of a three-piece uh, uh, tile here just like so uh, while keeping the insides flat and flush sometimes if you want to do hills you do want to actually add in that edge internally it can add a little bit of distinction um, but typically I'm doing this uh, so that all of the outside is is uh, the hill like and the internals are not all right I mentioned there's another way to go about doing this let's go ahead and look at that now all right so uh, I'm a little ways in the process I wanted to show this off um, if you're gonna go with the individual tiles what you may want to do is to set the tiles down initially number them in the order that they're gonna be setting down and then make a mark across the edges this way you can align them later this may give you greater precision uh, if you're gonna be doing lots of these where you can stack them up my recommendation is to uh, to label them continuously like that uh, and this way you can pick them out from a pile it's also kind of helpful in in roughing out the edges with a mark of some sort so you have a general cutting line but it's not absolutely necessary so if you're going to do this uh, with individual tiles this is probably the way i'd do it however i did come across the observation that since i'm using hot glue i've got a better way around this so here is a tile that I've simply set up, a three set of tiles that are hot glued together. Rather than make these individually, I came to the conclusion that since the hot wire cutters uh, uh, cutting filament is extremely hot, I can go through the glue without too much difficulty. And so what you can do is simply glue use the hot glue gun to glue up your your piece in the correct orientation and then cut the edges out you will have a more seamless uh, transition in the middle without having to deal with slight imperfections in that and then you can just glue one on top of the other and there you go without having to worry about aligning things this I think is the better way to go about doing it uh, and to give you an example of uh, what you can end up getting with some some complexity you see the larger tile here um, multiple levels you just simply lay things on top of one another uh, and then we're going to go through the same process for finishing the these tiles that are due for the planes tiles so let's take a look at this we've got our basic tile here that is finished i went ahead and coated this in our uh, our combination of black acrylic plus Mod Podge and I just went ahead and painted some black acrylic on top and the edges so that everything is completely opaque that's parcel overkill but I did it anyway uh, once you get to this point the next step is to paint the tiles brown like so uh, it is important when you're painting this that in the uh, more important than on the top the edges need to be completely opaque because these are going to be visible primarily as the color that you're painting them it might look more realistic with a different color, but to maintain the, uh, the idea that this might be dirt, I'm going to keep this as a, as a brown color generally here. After you've got it painted brown, then you're going to wash it. Here is my, com uh, my wash that I use. This is a combination of the uh, Pledge Floor Polish, also known as Future, uh, with some Black India ink. Uh, and I also went through and washed the edges. Um, I, I've, I've sort of come to the conclusion this part is not necessary. I, I did it in this case, and it, and it does seep down in the corners, which may add a little bit of additional um, factor to help glue it on. But I think mainly the top part is what we're going to use. After this, we're going to dry brush. Uh, so uh, for dry brushing, the top is normal, but I also go through and dry brush the edges. This will uh, allow you a little bit more of a lighter tone to the parts that are sticking out, uh, making it more a darker brown in the recesses. Rather than washing, just sticking with the dry brush is probably sufficient. Then we're going to finish this off with our flocking material. Now, in this case, the top is done the exact same way as our planes tiles. Uh, we put on the Mod Podge uh, and then we, we glue it down. On the edges, it is important to get the flocking on the edges as well because if you're not, if you forget this part, you're going to have simple bits of stuck out uh, 
uncolored or, or uncoated stuff. I also think it looks kind of interesting to add a little bit of the greenery seeping down from the corners. It makes it look like uh, that these are kind of sheer cliffs. Uh, it is definitely not realistic, but I think it looks interesting. Uh, and that is pretty much the entire process. Uh, now, uh, let me go through with you and show you how I ended up doing the, uh, uh, the flocking part of this here, the, the scatter part. Let's go ahead and do that really quickly with you. So, uh, we're going to start off by applying a quick coating of Mod Podge to the surface. Uh, this is my trusty condiment bottle full of the Mod Podge. Uh, and then I'm just going to go ahead and grab a brush to smear this around. Because the race sections has a tendency, in, in my case at least, to be sort of formed towards the center, I try my best to make sure that when I'm spreading this around, I'm also getting some and sort of a random pattern uh, uh, towards the middle so that it doesn't on every tile look like an exact circle or, uh, uh, or what have you of rock that is sticking up. Uh, so, I, so I'll go through in a few of these sections, add a little bit of glue, just kind of randomly fill in some of those divots uh, so that it's certainly not even. I also make sure you get this to the edges. If it, uh, unlike with the regular tiles, if it goes off a little bit on the edges, certainly not going to hurt anything, and we'll just expand upon that later. Uh, once we've got all of this glue down uh, to the edges, we're going to set our brush aside. Uh, we're going to grab our canister of flocking material. And we're going to shake it all over that thing uh, to uh, well, and hit the camera in the process. But we're going to shake it all over that. Um, I I'm going to grab a little bit of this uh, this Woodland Scenics uh, uh, first here, this particular color, just so we have something that looks different. Uh, we'll do that first. Uh, so pull on my hand away here. You'll see that I've got a line, a little line of color. We'll just throw the rest, throw it on there. Cover that up. Uh, and then you can see the next one here. This is my Woodland Scenics Burnt Grass Fine Turf. This is the one that's going to get shaken all over the uh, all over the tile. Just just going to pile it on. The Mod Podge does a good job at sticking it to it uh, at this point. So that is sufficient for the one tile here, and we're just going to tip it over immediately and that is sufficiently stuck on there for our purposes. Now, I've got some uh, Mod Podge off to the sides. Um, we're gonna go ahead and dip our brush in that Mod Podge, and I'm gonna start on the edges. So just like this, I'm literally just going along the edges which are otherwise unadorned. Uh, and for a small, smallish tile like this, I'll probably do the entire, the entire tile at once. If you're doing something that has a lot of edges, you might want to go through and do uh, it in smaller batches. Uh, I've got a build planned out later of a large scale map, and it is entirely the case that we'll need to be doing this in much smaller batches here. So let's continue applying the glue there. You can see the glue is sort of seeping over in the center. That's perfectly fine for this part. We're gonna make use of that here in a bit. But getting along the the, uh, the bottom area of this first is the important bit. All right, we're almost done here. Just sort of stick it in the glue and dab it on. Turn that around here. And just a little bit more. All right. So... Uh, I'm wiping this up from the edges of this, but uh, you, you'll see there's a few sections where the glue is sort of seeping down from the top. That's fine. I'm going to use those as uh, places where it's naturally starting to, to grow down. Uh, put a little bit just up at the top for a few of these here. Uh, some of them will connect all the way to the ground. And right here, where it's, we've got a big dollop. We'll just add a whole bunch there just like that. Now I'm just going to go ahead and use my fingers. I could grab the shaker bottle. Uh, and that's probably more efficient for what we're doing, but I'm just going to grab this. We're just going to pour it on just like that. Let gravity do the work. You don't need to do anything like pressing it in manually. Get our hands covered in this stuff. 
And uh, yeah, I think that looks uh, pretty good. Let's tap that off. And uh, let's see here. Let's let's go ahead and grab something to brush off the edges of that real quick. Don't really think we need it, but just to be on the safe side, just to get any kind of loose uh, detritus off of there. Oop, and drop drop the tile. That's fine. It's still got stuff pressed into it. We're all good. All right. So there you have it. So you can see where we got the green that is seeping down. Uh, all of the edges are being covered, uh, and there should be enough definition in the center where we'll be able to line it with the uh, with the marker later. Now, one thing, uh, when, when this dries, we're gonna be going through our normal combination of isopropyl alcohol for wetting everything down and our scenic cement, which is heavily diluted, diluted PVA with a little bit of um, flow aid. And we will simply cover it and then we will stick it down that way. Um, I would say it is important to draw the lines after the fact or you can get it starting to smear like I got in this case because I, I forgot about that. But that's it. Uh, this is the entire process. Uh, it is simple to go through and you get terrain that looks like this. I think it looks, comes out pretty good. Uh, so we're going to go up with this. I've got one more core feature that I think we are going to do a video on, which is going to be water effects. And then we're going to move into a larger scale map project. Uh, you can see here that for multiple levels, uh, it, this method gives you clear delineation because uh, not everything lines up perfectly. And you can tell how many levels you're in front of just by simply counting. It actually works really well. Um, but uh, yeah, uh, we're going to go ahead and pick this up on a uh, the next episode. We're going to work on some water features. Uh, which uh, I've, uh, I think I've come up with a fairly simple way to do that. And uh, if you have any questions, please ask. I will be glad to answer whatever questions I am able to. Uh, and I hope you all have enjoyed. So as always, from Hexcrafting, thank you. And you have a great day.